Here we are. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, if you're there, um, then let us know. Uh, as ever, it's, it's really nice to know whether we're uh, uh, by ourselves or got other people with us. Uh, check you can hear us. Um, tell us that you can see us. Uh, and that would be great. Um, I'm also interested to know um, this morning just how far away we've got people um, with us uh, from. Um, do we have anyone from Silly again? I know with it, Sue, I think it was. Sue, Sue on Silly? I think so. Um, anyone, else from, anyone else from anywhere else? That would be great. I think we've got, oh, look, we've got, we've got a number of people who are watching us. Now, I haven't noticed that before up there. So that means we've got 12 people watching at the moment. So welcome those 12 people. Um, do put something in the chat box just to tell us so you can see us and hear us. That would be really helpful. Otherwise, we might just be doing this. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Ros and Colin are there. John says he can hear us and see us. Thank you very much, John, for that uh, confirmation. Heather's there as well. Heather, you've got Robin with you? I, I imagine you might have. Maybe not. Anyway, whether it's you or both of you, you're very welcome this morning. We've, right. got, a, we've got a minute to go. Yes. So what do people need today if they haven't already got ready? Well, um, <coughs> I, I didn't put this out very early, but I did, did just add to the... Um, Facebook page earlier that we will be having coffee afterwards, so you might just like to be scurrying off and getting. There we are. Look, we've got little little jug of milk there, really. Hopefully, it says it's a jug. Absolutely, just in case there's any doubt about that. <laughs> uh, so um, you might want to get yourselves ready to have coffee uh, afterwards. Don't think there's anything else um, you need um, apart from your wits about you, really. I suppose that would be um, that would be a very good thing. Oh, I know what's happening here. We, ha we have this every week. Look, I forget to scroll down. There we are. Fiona's there. Fiona from Silly. Hello, Fiona. And Sarah from St. Eve. Andrew and Liz. And Roger, Kate, Heather. We've got Robin's there. And Esme and family. And maybe the Aindo family as well. And Charlotte and her family. Sue from Delabole. Excellent. We're all, we're, all, we're all gathering. It's lovely. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, so, um, I, I've said this the last couple of weeks, and um, there are, I know that there will be more people watching this than are putting comments in the chat, and that's absolutely fine. I just want to say to you, if that's you, you are very, very welcome indeed. Welcome to this, uh, this event, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching the, the recording. If you're just having a little peek to see what we get up to in the life of the church, if you're using this as a window, it's absolutely fine. We're really pleased that you are here. Great. Well, perhaps we should um, just quickly recap on what we've been up to. Yes. So would you like to um, show me your wristband, Philip? I would. And here's mine. Still on. Oh, where is it? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is there, I promise. And those wristbands represented four things, didn't they? Because they had yes. four strands in. Yes. And four commitments that the early church made. Yes. To the uh, Apostles, Apostles teaching, teaching to, to the fellowship, fellowship, to the breaking, breaking of bread, bread and, and to, to the prayer. Press. And we said that when we commit to those four things, uh, amazing things start to happen, didn't we? We did. And what, what happened? Uh, well, amazing things were done amongst the apostles. There were lots of signs and wonders and miracles and unexpected things happening. People were drawn really close together and other people were drawn uh, to join them. As so well. the challenge is for us today to be committed to those same things. So that those same things might happen. Uh, have those same amazing things happen. Yeah. And then last week, what did we uh, do? Last week, we thought about the two sons and the loving father who welcomed the one who'd gone off to party town, and then he went off to pig town, and then he came back to hometown, and we asked where we might be on that journey. Yeah. And this week, we're going to be looking at another of Jesus' uh, very famous um, stories, and uh, we're going to start with a version of that story for um, for our day. Uh, it's called Good Sam, um, and uh, as we did last week, when we do something interactive, there are some things that you need to do uh, to to respond to um, to all of this. So, for instance, when you hear the words "posh businessman." Of course, it could be a posh businesswoman. Let's not be sexist about this, but for this story's purposes, it's a posh businessman. When you hear the words posh businessman, you say, oh, I say. 
Um, and when you hear uh, the words bus or bus stop, you go ding ding. That's a bit old fashioned, isn't it? Buses going ding ding. Haven't you got a bell? No, I haven't. We'll just have to go ding ding. When you hear bus or bus stop, go ding ding. I suppose that's, you know, stopping the bus by mm. pressing the button. In the old days. In the old days. Uh, when you hear the word um, dirty, you need to go Phew! or something mm -hmm. equivalent to that. Express your revulsion of the dirt. Um, now, I'm a, slightly, uh, slightly uneasy about this next one because um, it's, it's when you hear the word church warden. Now, I have to say I'm, I'm great friends with all of our church wardens across the diocese. They are wonderful people. Uh, but anyway, this, this script has the word church warden in it. And when you hear the word church warden, I want you to shake hands with the person next to you because your, your church wardens are, are warm, friendly people. Um, so you shake hands with the person next to you. And if you haven't got somebody with you, what do you do? Uh, wave at the screen, wave at us. Mm. Okay. Um, and uh, if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you hear the word football supporters, again, no prejudice against football supporters, but they don't come out well in this story. If you hear the word football supporters, I want you to go, Way! or something like that. Express your support for your team. Well, we keep them scrolling. I'm afraid we can't read it. Oh, look, Andrew Turner says he's wearing his wristband. Excellent. That's worth, very good. Yeah, very that's good. worth reading that. Uh, anyway, finally, when you hear the word, um, uh, when, when Ruth does this, okay, you've got to say, good Sam the Tramp. Should we just practice Should we that? just have a quick re recap, Sam? Well, you, you run through them and I'll, I'll do oh. the responses. So, when I say posh businessman. Oh, I say. Bus stop. Or ding, bus. ding. Dirty, Pwah. church warden, football supporters. Yay! You're not going to support for your team. Uh, no, no, I'm going to be, <laughs> not reveal any prejudice. And when I go like that, good Sam the Tramp. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Should we, Excellent. Should we go? Should we, we go? Shall. Right. We shall. We shall. Okay. So I hope everybody's ready, and it really doesn't matter if you miss some of these things. It really doesn't matter. The important thing is that you listen to the story. So, are you ready, Philip? Yes. Once there was a bus stop. Ding, ding. And there were three people waiting at this bus stop. Ding, ding. First, there was a posh businessman. Oh, I say. Who had a very big house and lots of money. Then there was the local church warden. He had a house and quite a lot of money. He's a man again. Mm -hmm. He might be a lady. But not as much as the posh businessman. Oh, I say. The third person at the bus stop was called... Good Sam the Tramp. He was a very dirty Blech. tramp because he didn't have a house or any money. He lived in a cardboard box and he didn't have any friends because he was so dirty. Blech. Well, just then a gang of football supporters Blech. went running past the bus stop. Ding, ding. And these football supporters Blech. made a lot of noise. Unfortunately, these particular football supporters Blech. weren't very nice. They didn't notice the posh businessman. Oh, I say. Or the church warden. Oh. <laughs> or. Good Sam the Tramp. But they did see the school teacher coming the other way. And as they got, got to the bus stop. Ding, ding. The football supporters. Whee! Grabbed him. Threw him to the ground. And stole his wallet, his watch, and all his money. Then they ran off, leaving him lying there. Just then, the bus. Ding, ding. Arrived. The posh businessman oh, I say. looked at the teacher, then quickly jumped on the bus. Ding, ding. Because he couldn't stand the sight of blood. The church warden, well, he looked at the teacher. Then he saw the businessman oh, I say. jump on the bus. Ding, ding. And he decided to do the same because he was frightened of the football support. <laughs> Meanwhile, Good Sam the Tramp. Who was standing on the end, saw the teacher and felt sorry for him. So he missed the bus. Ding, ding. Went over to the man and helped him up. Then he gave the teacher 50p, which was all the money he'd got from begging. And even though Sam was very dirty, <clears throat> the teacher didn't mind because he took him to a hospital and made sure he was okay. Now, which person was a neighbour to the teacher? Not the posh businessman. Oh, I say. Nor the church warden. 
No, the man's neighbour was... Good Sam the Tramp. Because he showed him love and he acted like a friend. The end. <laughs> now, uh, before we, uh, we study this story, or rather the, uh, the equivalent of it, or the, the original version from the Bible, I want us to have a little discussion. And I want us to have this either online or you might want to have it at home. Okay? So if you're in a family at home, you might want to discuss this, these questions amongst yourselves. Or you can have a conversation with, uh, with us and join in what we're talking about. So um, the question is this. During this coronavirus crisis, have you noticed anyone being particularly kind? And has there anyone that you have noticed uh, being kind who you didn't really expect, who's been a bit of a surprise to you? Okay, so who have you noticed being kind? And is there anyone in all of that who you didn't expect to be quite as kind as they have been? Okay, it's a bit of a challenging question, but it's an important one, I think. Um, so you might just want to, to feed in your, uh, your thoughts and your suggestions. And I'm going to just scroll down here so we can see the, um, the uh, responses as they, as they come in. Well, what about you, Philip? Have you noticed everybody being particularly kind? I, I, I've noticed lots of people being really kind um, during, this, um, during this crisis. Uh, and I think, um, you know, I think Cornwall's been just fantastic, really. Um, you know, uh, one of the things I've been doing is ringing people up around Cornwall who've been running various different sort of community projects. Um, and there's some amazing people out there doing some absolutely fantastic stuff. And I, I, I've been really, um, yeah, I've been really humbled by that. And, and actually, I think I'd also say, and I can't name any names, but, but some of the people you see doing really wonderful things, you know, they're not, they're not your normal people. They're not your posh businessmen or, or others. I'm not going to say church wardens because that's unfair. Because they're great. Because they're great and we love them. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I have seen, I've seen some, uh, I've, I've talked to some amazing people over the last uh, I think few what weeks. It, what has happened is that people are talking to each other in different ways. So engaging with each other when they do meet either um, in the street or outside or, or yeah. um, virtually. So um, we're a bit kind of cut off here, to be honest, but um, I'm physically cut off from, from most people around us. Mm. But I've had some lovely conversations through the door with the postman, <laughs> yes, yeah. for example. And, uh, and I would never, I, I think I have to admit, I would never have done that if no. it hadn't been for this. No. Uh, Etienne says, talks about his, his neighbour. I suppose that means your neighbour, Etienne, who you've been aware of doing some really mm. good things. And perhaps that's been a surprise and not something you might have seen before. Okay, very, very good. We've had, uh, Annette says, the NHS volunteers, and I think that's right, isn't it? Because we tend to think of the doctors and the nurses. But yeah. there are an awful lot of people who are volunteering in ways that um, mm. we don't hear about necessarily, right. but are doing an amazing job. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So any more? Any more that you want, to, you want to send in? Or have you been having a conversation around the family table about people who have been kind, or perhaps unexpected people? Uh, who you notice being being kind, then uh, do just put stuff in the um, uh, in in the chat box. And actually, I, I do just want to echo something Ruth just said. You may well have much better experience than, than, than we do of this happening because here where we live, it, it's it's very lovely, um, but it's also very isolated. So we do do the NHS uh, clap for carers, and we're going to be doing a little bit more of that. Um, later on, but we can never hear anyone else doing any clapping because we're just so far I can, away. I can hear you. Yeah, 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 and I can hear you too. <laughs> yes, so that, that, that's all right. So that works. Should, should we move on, do you think? Oh, look, Hannah, oh, Claire, Claire says, Claire says, oh, no, there's lots of things coming in now. Uh, Claire says, oh, yeah, Delable so. Village Community has been brilliant. Sue talks about her neighbours. David uh, talks about his postman as well. Oh, no, Theo says his best friend James Warwick has been really kind. Oh. Okay, well, let's do a clap for carers yeah. for, for, ja for James Warwick. Well done, James. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sarah talks about neighbours and friends checking in on us. That's really good. Oh, the milkman. Yeah, delivery Great. drivers. Andrew says the post... Whoops. What's that for a moment? Uh, the post office at St. Devil is special, but Rebecca's gone beyond special to supply her customers. Yeah, that's lovely. I've noticed most people have been kinder, says Lisa, but I don't know anyone. I don't know. Oops. I don't know anyone before I thought would not be kind. Well, that's good. That's good. I suppose. Mm. 
Neighbours, teachers, volunteers, lots and lots of good people. Excellent. So should we go back to our story? Uh, yes, yes, okay. And uh, this time we're going to reread it from the, the, the proper version in the Bible. Well, the version okay. that Jesus, the story that Jesus told. So this is fact. actually what Jesus told, yes. isn't it? Yes. But we're still going to do it interactively. So here are your cues, and Philip will show you the actions. When I read Jesus... You say, he's the Lord. When I say law or scriptures, mime opening a book. When I say love, you hand on heart or you could do the heart symbol if you want, okay. if that's more comfortable. comfortable. When I say neighbour, say hello and wave to the person next to you or to an imaginary person next to you or think about the hello. Neighbor of yours. When I say man, say poor chap. So let's run through those again. Jesus. He's the Lord. Law or scriptures. Love or... Oh, I, I'm not being you a can't do that one, can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbour. Hello. Man. Poor chap. Okay. So, here we go. This is the story that Jesus actually told to the people around him. So, let me begin. Are you ready? Yep. An expert in the law of Moses stood up and asked Jesus... He's the Lord. ...a question to see what he would say. Teacher. He asked, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus. He's the Lord. Jesus answered, what is written in the scriptures? How do you understand them? He replied, the scriptures say, love the Lord. Oh, oh. Yeah, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. They also say, love your neighbors. Hello. As much as you love yourself. Jesus He's the Lord. said, you have given the right answer. If you do this, you will have eternal life. But the man Poor chap. wanted to show that he knew what he was talking about. So he asked Jesus, He's the Lord. Who are my neighbours? Hello. Jesus. No, he's the Lord. Replied, as a man Poor chap. was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, robbers attacked him and grabbed everything he had. They beat him up and ran off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, but when he saw the man, Poor chap. he walked by on the other side. Later, a temple helper came to the same place, but when he saw the man Poor chap. who'd been beaten up, he also went by on the other side. Someone from Samaria then came travelling along that road. When he saw the man, Poor chap. he felt sorry for him and went over to him. He treated his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put him on his own donkey, took him to an inn, where he took care of him. The next morning, he gave the innkeeper two silver coins and said, Please take care of the man. Poor chap. If you spend more than this on him, I will pay you when I return. Then Jesus He's the Lord. asked, Which one of these three people was a real neighbour Hello. to the man? Poor chap. Who was beaten up by the robbers. The teacher answered, The one who showed pity. Jesus. He's said, the Lord. Go and do the same. So let's um, let's just think about this story. Before we get to the third person who was walking along the road and came across that man, let's just think about the first two and what might have been going through there. Minds. So who were they? There was a priest. There were two re good religious people, basically. Oh, okay. Two good religious so people. Churchy people. Sure. We might say churchy people, <laughs> aren't they? Yes. Now these two people were good religious people. They knew the law. There we are. The law of Moses. So they knew what they had to do. The young man told Jesus that the law of Moses told people to love two things. So this is a little test for you. The law of Moses told people to love two things. So what were they? What, please, was the first? We'll have a little race to see who can fill it in, first of all, uh, give us a response. What was the first thing that the law of Moses told people to love? You only need to write one word in, so as quick as you can. 
And meanwhile, I just ought to say there have been lots of other suggestions about how people have been um, helpers and, and some unexpected people as well. So Esme talked about business people being very kind mm -hmm. and using the resources of their business. Heather, Heather, you win. Heather says God, absolutely. So, what, what does that mean, God? Uh, what does it It says, oh, I see, to love God. Yes, that's right, that's right. And how so. did it go? Colin, you get second prize. So love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That was the first thing that the law of Moses told people to love. And what was the second? What was the second? What was the second? Okay, here's, here we go. Another race, please. What was the second thing that the law of Moses told people to love? And just, uh, just, one, uh, just one word will do. What was the second thing that the law of Moses told people to love? Love. I'm sure they're all typing away and they've already typed and they're saying, why haven't you seen it yet? Which I know. Because it does, it does, the there, it does. Yeah, yeah. Peter says yes, but she's a vicar. Yes, but you're a church warden, Peter. You should still know. Neighbour! Neighbour! Colin, Colin wins. Colin well done. Colin's a reader. Because he, are we, Should he know that because he's he should, a reader? He I think every Christian should know that, actually. Here right. they all come in. So well the done. So two things were to love the Lord your God. With all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And love your neighbour. As your Self. Okay, and that was from the, the law, law of Moses, the Old Testament law of Moses. Okay. 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 So, the thing is, you see, these two people knew what they had to do. They knew that they should have cared for this poor man who was beaten up by the side of the road. So here's the big question. They knew what they had to do. Why didn't they do it? Well, so why do you think... Sorry, go on. I was going to say that. Why do you think they didn't do what they knew they had to do? That's my question. Why do you think they didn't do what they knew they had to do? So that's, that's a question. Um, and you might like to send in your suggestions. You might like to um, uh, have a think about it in your families, if you're with families or with other people. Why didn't these people do what they should have done? So if I think myself into that situation, yeah. I, might have been, I might have been in a hurry to get somewhere. Okay, so you so, thought you had better things to do? Well, for example, if I was, you know, when I used to, to go out to work, when we lived where we lived before, mm -hmm. I would be in my, my work clothes. Yep. And um, I probably didn't want to get dirty. Yep. We've got a couple of comments coming in. Um, you wouldn't want to get dirty, that's very good. Fear. Paul says fear. Jackie yeah. says fear. Colin says self-preservation. Lisa also says fear. Because mm, um, you might think that the person would fight back. You don't know, do you? Well, it, we're often frightened of things that we're not used to. If you see something that's, that's very unexpected and not very nice, it, it is frightening. Rebecca says they might have been uh, scared. Mm. That's true. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Any other, any other thoughts well, coming especially in? Especially if you're a woman and you see something like that, I think you do feel a bit nervous. I would feel nervous. Yeah. Lucy, Lucy says frightened women. as well. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So very good. There could have been all sorts of reasons. All sorts of reasons. All sorts of reasons. And, and, and we, can do, we can be the same. We can come up with all sorts of reasons why we don't do things that we should do. Um, whatever age we are, uh, you know, we, 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 we can find ourselves doing that. But there was one person here who, who did do what he should have done. The man from Samaria did what he should have done. Now, the other two people really would have really looked down on this man from Samaria and, and it, for, for a very simple and a very unpleasant really, reason, really, he was just the wrong sort of person. They were, they were racist, basically. I think that's probably no other way to say it. And they didn't like people from Samaria. They thought they were really second-class um, citizens. So to them, the man from Samaria was like Sam the Tramp in the first story, not someone you should really have anything um, to do with. Someone to keep at arm's length. But the man from Samaria did what he should have done. But, but why did he do what he should have done? I mean, so I, I get this. So the man from Samaria was somebody that, that wasn't probably a very popular person in society. Mm -hmm. he, he wasn't like everybody else yep. that was around. So why do you think... Um, he did what he should have done. Mm. That's a very good question. Um, we've just, uh, <laughs> we're just interrupting this broadcast to say we've had a, a message on the screen that says, sorry, we're having trouble with playing this video. 
Is that, um, just uh, let us know if you can uh, see us still. That will be really helpful. Because we can't see ourselves. If the screen's gone blank, we might have to end the live video and, uh, and, and start again. So tell us if you can, uh, tell us if you've got problems, issues uh, seeing us. That would be really helpful. Um. There's some very good answers to questions we've asked coming in. Like not. it's a, a worry about what the commitment will uh, be. All I'll okay here. All, all okay. Okay, so we're okay brilliant. Okay, we, it may just be our end. If you do Good. get, um, thank you, everyone. That's really helpful. If you do, um, if we do get technical problems, then just uh, just tell us. We're just going to have to continue working with the blank screen in, in front of us. But so we can see all your comments. That's the only thing we can see. So forgive us. Yeah, we're um, we're we're, so, tra we're trained professionals. Right. We'll work so to a blank going screen. Going back to the question, where were we? Yes. Why do you think? Uh, the Samaritan did what he did. What, why did he do something different from the other two who you might have expected to do the right thing? Yeah, okay. Are you asking me that question? Are we asking everyone that question? Everybody. Okay. Well, I, you're the only person I can see now. Okay. <laughs> um, so why did he do what he should have done? Um, well, I suppose perhaps because it was the opposite for him of what the other people were feeling. So if they were frightened, um, then then for some reason he, 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 he wasn't. Mm. And Colin uh, says because he had compassion. Yeah, 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 he was kind, exactly. Yeah. And I, you see, I think the important thing is, is this. He didn't just know what he needed to do, he did it. Mm. Uh, and here's another important, really important question. What did he need to do? What did he need to do? And here's a clue. The answer, I think, to that question, what did he need to do, is not that he needed to help the man to the inn and pay for his room and all those other kind things that he did. There was one thing above all else that he needed to do, and that is something that the other two didn't do. So what did he need to do above all else? Well, Again, we'll have a... We'll have a Neil, Neil has already said it. Has he? Yeah, he said it a bit further up the comment line, and that was love. Oh, exactly, exactly, exactly. So that's the real difference between this man and the other two. It's not just what he did, it's why he did it. He loved and he cared for this man, and the other two didn't. They didn't love. He loved, they didn't. The other two didn't do what people might have expected them to do, but like Sam the Tramp, this man did do what people wouldn't have expected him to do which is why I think we can call him. We're going to have a little drum roll here, and this then we'll reveal work, it. because I can't see what no. I'm doing. <laughs> Ruth's about to, to hold up a card. So, so drum this, roll. We can call this man the... The Samaritan. The unexpected rescuer. <laughs> I hope you can see that. <laughs> the unexpected rescuer. So having had trouble with our technology at this end already, we're going to push it even further. We are. Because we're going to have, just wait for this, we're going to have a phone in. Ah! So get your phones. So um, remember we asked you earlier about um, what you noticed um, about people being particularly kind during the crisis. And has there been anyone in particular that you didn't expect to show kindness like the Samaritan did? So how is this going to work for that? Okay, so what I'd like you to do is, is ring our number here. And that number is 01872. 862657. 01872-862-657. And I'd like you to ring in and I'd like you to tell us about any unexpected person helping out in this crisis that you have come across. So this might be another race to get on. So we've only got one phone line. Um, and so just quick, quick stories about people, not stories, truths about people who have been helping out during these last few weeks. So, so, as I say, we're not going to be defeated by the technology. The phone, <laughs> is, the phone is here, ready and waiting for someone to phone in. On 018728768. Oh, oh, it's rung, it's rung. <laughs> Hello? Oh. Oh. Hello. Hello, Ben. It's the Hodge family. Oh, 
Well, ben, ben, where are you phoning from? So we're, we're in Studios. Um, lovely, lovely day here. Lovely sunny day. Good. Um, What's your story? So, yeah, so I, so I know I'm a lady, I won't mention her name, um, but she's been working for quite a while with um, people who come out of refuge houses. Okay, I'm, going to, I'm just going to repeat some of this as you go along, um, Ben, just in case uh, people can't okay. hear it. So, so you're working with a lady who's helping people who comes out of refuge houses. Keep going. Yeah, and, and obviously there was, a, you know, there was an issue with um, how much she could do you know, during the lockdown and with social distancing and things. Yep. And well, she's just been amazing. So she basically has been collecting um, furniture, ovens, oh, wow. um, mattresses, Basically, for the people who um, they literally come out of these refugee houses with, with absolutely nothing at all. Yeah. And yeah, she, she's kind of um, so in terms of the unexpected rescue. I mean, I've mm. seen the, the, you know the joy on people's faces when this complete, complete stranger, you know, they have never met her before. Um, they've been referred by you know other agencies. There hasn't been even any personal contact. Yeah, that's Just amazing. Just mailing her little blue van um, and unloading mm. a match. Brilliant, brilliant. So, 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 that, so providing for people just what they need at the time that they need it. Totally, and yeah. simply, um, you know, very low cost. Uh, mm. She's brilliant. amazing, and she just does it all day, every day. That's and and uh, t tell, me this, tell me this, Ben. She's unexpected because people don't expect, um, don't expect her to turn up with the things that she turns up with. But is there anything about her that makes her a little bit unexpected or a bit unusual? Yes. Well, she's, um, I, I don't, I, I don't know, well, okay, so I have to her name. So she's, she's 79, nearly 80. Yeah. Mm. Um, for a start. Um, and she, she has, she comes from a very, very different background to, right. um, to most of the people that she is yeah. um, helping. And, you know, I think that's, you know, that's, for some people, that's a bit of a barrier. Yeah. Um, so, you know, she comes from, you know, obviously a completely different background, and yet she, Gap, brilliant, brilliant, love, lovely. She, um, so, you know, that's, that's the Excellent. Um, we don't have to be like people; we just have to love people. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Ben. Thank you so much for calling. Well, I'm going to. I'm going to hang up. Hello to the family. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Lots of love to all, all of the huds. So we've had some other callers trying to come in. So, so this, this was about a lady who, who, for starters, is much older than you would expect. Yeah. Who's just doing something. Um, exactly what people need at the time that they need it yep. not because they'd asked yeah so who else was trying to phone in do you want to whoever yeah there was there was a number in falmouth trying to ring in so we'll so we'll happily people. happily take your call the line is free call us <laughs> yes. that's a great story though isn't it it's a brilliant Somebody story doing that. it's a brilliant story and and as i say i've i've just heard lots and lots of stories um uh like that over the last um few weeks and it's it's, it's not, um, you know, a lot of this stuff has been happening anyway, actually. It's not, it's not stuff that, that people are doing new during this uh, lockdown. They're doing, they're doing more than there were before, but it's not new. Um, there was a oh, missed call. call. Oh, so I do beg your pardon. Don't back, don't say what the number is. Okay. okay, hang on, I'll do that. I'm just going to phone that number back. Oh, call back. I think the number's, the, the user's busy. <laughs> Cancel it. Okay. I'm bringing up the gun callers. This is what they call dead time on the uh, on the um, on, on on the radio, isn't it? But I think I think what um, what the story, the Good Samaritan story, and what what we oh, oh here we caller. go, here we go. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Who are you, please? It's Lisa. Oh. Oh, hello, Lisa. Hello, nice, Lisa. nice, 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 nice to hear you. What's your What's you your too. story? Um, it's, a, it's about a chap that we know who um, has been taking in uh, old laptops from people. Okay. And he's been repairing them and wiping them and handing them out to children whose parents can't afford to oh. buy oh. computers, and so that it helps during the lockdown. Oh, that's really good. No, I think I think people can hear what the callers are saying, but this is just repeated. This anyway. is somebody who's collecting laptops and uh, cleaning them down and sorting them out and giving them to children 
uh, who need laptops but can't afford to have laptops in their home to help them work from home. Because this, this has been a real issue, hasn't it? That, that, you know, if you've got good internet connectivity at home, you've got good IT, you can do remote learning well. But what if you haven't? Mm -hmm. and, and not everyone has by, by any means. And that's, um, you know, that, that, that puts them at a real disadvantage. So hearing people say that is, uh, is, 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 is really good. Um, thank you, Lisa, very much. Really, really good to hear that. And, and who, who's she with? Who are you with, Lisa? Um, I'm alone at the moment. Oh, I'm I see. Well, no, thank you so much for uh, being here. You, you are Lisa Coupland, I presume. I am indeed. Okay. Well, we ought just to give a little bit of a shout out to to Mark, her her husband. Uh, Lisa, tell us what Mark does. Um, he's a search and rescue pilot with Coast Guard. Oh wow. Yeah, exactly. In fact, he's the chief chief search and rescue pilot with the. Uh, uh, with the post, uh, Coast Guard, so that, that's a really Amazing. important... He, he, he may well be an unexpected rescuer quite often for people, I imagine. <laughs> and they're absolutely delighted to see him when he turns up. Thanks, Lisa, ever so much. Lovely to talk to you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Excellent. So those, those are two really good, uh, really good examples. Now, what we're going to do now... Oh, no, this is your bit. I beg your pardon. I think we should, uh, we should thank God for these people and pray for them. Um, and anyone else that we know who's caring for people like the man from Samaria did. Uh, so um, pray together with your people that you're with. Pray on your own. Um, send in your prayer requests so that we could um, just read them out. So that we can be praying for the unexpected rescuers uh, of our day. And instead of saying amen um, when we read somebody out or mention somebody or some people, we're going to... Just give a little clap. So this is our clap for the... This is our clap for carers. Well, it's for the unexpected rescuers, really, it's, isn't Absolutely. It? So, so, so like the clap for carers, when we hear of uh, someone uh, who we need to give thanks for, we're going to give them a clap. Well, we have one already, which is the leader of the local food bank, where Keith is, and he's in constant pain, but he still comes to organise and help pack the food. So, Lord, we thank you for him and we pray for him in his pain and we give him a or it might be a her or her yeah. whoever it is we we thank god for, yeah. for 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 him or her and lord we want to thank you too for everyone who uh is is running and operating food banks in this time and uh, often in difficult circumstances but with increased numbers of uh, of people wanting their services so we thank you for all of them and Lord, we thank you for all the volunteers across the country who are supporting prisoners who are being released during this time. What a strange time to be coming out of prison. And we thank you for the people who are supporting them. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And we want to thank you, Lord, too, for the people that we've just heard about. Uh, we thank you for uh, that lady who's providing people with um, uh, furniture and, and things that they need as they... Um, that they're facing really difficult circumstances. Thank you for her. And for that person who is taking laptops and cleaning them up and passing them out to children who need them, who can do that, so that they can do their schoolwork from home. Thank you for them, Lord. Thank you. And thank you for that, uh, that person who is repurposing those laptops so that children who can... Oh, did you? Oh, beg your pardon. Uh, here we are. Here's another one. Uh, Nicole says, uh, thank you, thanks for Carol, who's making masks for people. We do. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for Carol. Thank you for... And, and care is in care homes. Absolutely, Annette. Thank you for that. Thank you, really, Lord, very much indeed for carers in care homes who often have really faced very, very difficult situations and circumstances. My dad's in a care home, and, and the care he's receiving there is just fantastic. So I want to... A big, big uh, clap for, for carer, Etienne, care home carers. Etienne wants to mention a housebound person that he knows who is still, you'd think they wouldn't be able to do anything being mm. housebound, but actually this person is still giving financially, and that's what she, can, she or he can do to help. So, clap for them. For people preparing cafe abundance meals for their communities, yes, absolutely. I want to get, give a clap for Gemma in, um, in Liscard, who's, uh, who's, who's doing that uh, particularly. And uh, Esme says, families living apart in order to allow carers to keep going in their vital roles for months of separation. Absolutely. And actually, can we also give a clap for, she, she, she will hate me doing this, but for Esme and for Cornwall Hugs Grenfell and what they're doing to provide accommodation and support for Cornwall Hugs Care Workers. Cor Cornwall Hugs Care Workers. 
that's what it is. Uh, but anyway, big, big clap for Cornwall Hunts care workers. And of course, for all our doctors and nurses and paramedics and hospital volunteers, of yeah. course we want to clap. We do, we do. Them. And yeah. give God all the thanks for these people and just pray that they are kept safe and uh, go on doing all these things because of their love for other people. Amen. So, let's, let's move on a little bit. Um, I think we can take this story of the Good Samaritan uh, one stage further. And let's think for a moment about who we see ourselves as in the story. Of course, we should be like the Good Samaritan. We can see ourselves as the Good Samaritan in the story. But I think we're also like someone else in the story. And I don't mean the one who walked along, the other two uh, who walked along the road. So. Can you guess who else in the story, perhaps, we might be like? We'll have another little race. We've still got lots of good thoughts coming in about people who are helping, but let's move on to this. So there aren't many people in the story, though. No. So who else might we be like in this story? So if we're not like the two story? people who walked past, and we're not the Good Samaritan. We're not only like the Good Samaritan. Who else might we be like in the story? Mm. Mm. All gone quiet. Let's see if there's any answers going to come in. Who else might we be? Who else is in the story? In the story. Well, there's the innkeeper. Yeah. There's the donkey. Yeah. Oh, Phil's got it right. Oh, oh, the victim. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Absolutely. Thank you. I think I think we can we can see ourselves as being a little bit like the victim about the traveller, the, the the man who was injured on the side of the road. We were a bit like that poor man, not beaten up by other people, but damaged by our sin and our weaknesses and our failings. Well, and just by maybe the way we feel about ourselves. Indeed, absolutely. But someone walked down the road and picked us up and cared for us and loved us. So we'll have another little race. See who can be the first to say who that was, who walked down the road, found us there, picked us up, cared for us, and, goes and on loved us, that. and goes on <clears> doing <throat> that. Didn't just do it once and walked away, he's always with us. Yeah. Who was that person? Who is that person? Who is that person? Thank you, Ruth, for correct <laughs> correcting me theologically. <laughs> who is that person? Well, I think it's no surprise, is it? Oh, oh, Heather! Heather wins again! <laughs> Heather, you're, you're, you're absolutely on the button, and perhaps you have a really good internet connection. She's the fastest finger first. You're the fastest finger first. So, Heather Aston says Jesus. Exactly. Alice exactly. Says, Alice, Alice, Alice says, says Jesus, Jesus as well. Well, Alice. well done, Alice. Well done. And Annette, too. So, they're all coming in. So, so, why is he unexpected? Well, because, you know, in Jesus' day, he was not the rescuer that anyone was, uh, was expecting. No one in Jesus' day really expected God's rescuer, oh, the Messiah, to come like uh, Jesus did. Jesus is not the rescuer that anyone was expecting. And there are lots of people today who, who cannot or, or just find it very difficult to see Jesus as their, uh, as their rescuer. To them, too, he'd be very unexpected. Um, but he is the one that we need. Why, why is he, he the one that we need? Why do you think he's the one that we need? Let me ask you this question. Do you think that Jesus uh, loved the Lord his God with all his heart, soul, mind and strength? Yes. Do you think he loved his neighbour as himself? Yes. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. That's, because, what, because, that's because why he's he the one us. we need. Because he loves us. Ah, got it. Exactly. So, we are going to be um, very brave again. You are. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to celebrate um, Jesus' rescuing love, Jesus as our unexpected rescuer, by <laughs> singing once again. Again, because we have a blank screen, I can't tell whether you can see the words, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yes, it's yes. It's an old one again, I'm afraid. It's not that old, actually. It's quite old, so I think It's oldish. Know. <laughs> um, I don't know that many people do know this song, actually, oh, really? but I, it's really one of my... Um, we sang it masses in... in the, where did we sing it? Where we used to live. Yeah. Yes, that's because I kept on choosing it. <laughs> so this song is called um, When I Was Lost, You Came and Rescued Me. I can't see where the end of the verse is. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
reached down into the pit and lifted me. Oh, Lord, such love. I was as far from you as I could be. Uh, there's a, a question here for any readers and clergy. Can you tell us uh, which psalm this is, uh, this is based on? Or any, any, anyone else who'd like to have a go? But most of all, let's rejoice in these, uh, in, in these words. When I was lost, you came and rescued me. And the chorus is, there is a new song in my mouth. There is a deep cry in my heart, a hymn of praise to almighty God. Your love has lifted me. Okay, let's, uh, let's give it a go. Okay. I was lost, you came and rescued me, reached down into the pit and lifted me, oh Lord, such love, I was as far from you as I could be, you know all the things I've ever done, but Jesus' blood has cancelled everyone, oh Lord, such grace to qualify me as your own. There is a new song in my mouth, there is a deep cry in my heart, a hymn of praise to Almighty God, hallelujah. And now I stand firm on this rock, my life is hidden now, with Christ in God the old has gone and the new has come, hallelujah. Your love has lifted me. Now I have come into your family, for the Son of God has died for me. Oh Lord, such peace, I am as loved by you as I could be. In the full assurance of your love, now with every confidence we come. Oh Lord, such joy to know that you delight in us. There is a new song in my mouth, there is a deep cry in my heart a hymn of praise to almighty god hallelujah and now i stand firm on this rock my life is hid and now with christ in god the old is gone and the new has come hallelujah your love has lifted me There is a new song in my mouth, there is a deep cry in my heart, a hymn of praise to Almighty God, hallelujah. And now I stand firm on this rock, my life is hid, and now with Christ in God, the old has gone, and the new has come, hallelujah. Your love has lifted me. Oh, phew. It's your classic. You just don't know when to finish. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Never know quite I, know when to finish. I hope people could see that. I saw... Because I couldn't even see the screen at all, and now I see that I should have lifted it up a bit. So <laughs> sorry, no. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Percussion happening over the pancakes. Well done, well done, the uh, uh, Esme's family. That's brilliant. So the point about that song is that is that even though we feel lost and alone and maybe hurt and damaged, Jesus can come in and rescue us. Jesus is our unexpected rescuer because he loves us. So um, we're coming to the end, um, and uh, we're going to have coffee to, together now, um, or whatever you choose. Other beverages, of course, are available, um, hot and soft. 
Um, but as we do that, uh, what I'd like to do is to tell us any plans that you have for this coming week, because it will be good to know that, and, and tell us particularly if there are things that you're going to do this week, like the Good Samaritan, that we can pray for. And as we have our coffee, uh, we, will, we will pray for, uh, for one another. So any thoughts, any ideas about um, things you're going to do this week that we can pray for, send them in. And we will, uh, we will do that. When you say like the Good Samaritan, you mean anything unexpected, uh, unexpected, or things that you're expecting to do because they're in your because they're in your diary. Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, the hive, Ruth? Um, yes. Because you're involved in that a bit, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, so I'm very uh, pleased to be involved as a trustee of a new charity called the Hive Cornwall, which is just really um, was, was just getting going before this crisis hit mm. and takes surplus food from all sorts of places, processes it, cooks it, and vacuum packs it into complete, nutritious, balanced meals, which are then um, available for people in need. And during this crisis, uh, they've really It's really taken off, isn't it? And um, have been particularly, um, when, when we started, targeting children um, and families where normally they would have free school meals right and and obviously with the schools shut the children weren't getting food okay. so providing to the to the whole families right um, and that's amazing so that's good good okay well let's 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 pray for the hive and then we'll come to some of these things on the screen so thank you Lord for the hive thank you for uh, Brian whose idea it was in the first place and thank you that that idea was ready to go when this crisis um, hit and thank you for the amazing way that it has uh, provided really good nutritious meals to lots of people who, who might not otherwise um, have them what else should we pray for so somebody is going to phone people and it's just Who's that? further Ooh. up I think we'll watch. scroll back up a bit here we go so mary's sending out messy church envelopes we pray for that marion is, is going to phone other church goers to make sure they're okay um and uh, if they need any help so that's worth Yes, absolutely. So we pray, Lord, we pray for the messy church envelopes going out, for, the, for Marin phoning, um, uh, phoning parishioners, making sure they're okay. Pray for Maddie editing the parish magazine. Pray that that uh, magazine will really help people keep, uh, keep in touch. And Roger's come up with a really good thing that I think we all ought to pray that we can do, which is to do something nice in a random way for random people once a day. Right. So. We pray for Annette uh, working from home, uh, being very busy doing that. Um, and we pray for her session online with the RF uh, Air Cadets. Pray that they'll feel connected and, and encouraged and uh, that all of that will go on, uh, building them up in, uh, in, in character and in, in service. Mm. Pray for um, Etienne starting a Zoom Bible study uh, this week. Pray that that will be really uh, fruitful and people will feel fed and, uh, and connected. Um, and Lisa writing a reflection on giving for the par parish magazine. Um, that's, uh, that, that's a really important thing to do. Pray Lord, that you'll give Lisa inspiration uh, to just hit the right note on an issue that can be, uh, that can be sensitive. And for her work to phoning the, the elderly and the, uh, the isolated. So we do want to pray that each and every one of us will be inspired to do something unexpected mm. Uh, for people around us, whether that's, um, uh, mm. you've all got your own ideas about that, help us not to be uh, um, too wound up in our own situations, mm. that we can't reach out and show your love to other people. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we pray that you will bring us um, unexpected opportunities this week to serve in ways that perhaps we, we, we just couldn't have anticipated. And, and Lord, when those opportunities come our way, um, help us to take them. We all want to pray for chaplaincy services. Jackie asked for us to pray for the Community Chaplaincy Association online training. Pray for that. If you're giving that, Jackie, or however it's happening, uh, pray that that will, will, will be really effective. And Rachel asked us to pray for the chaplaincy team at Trulisk, of which she's a member. And the Lord, we do thank you for that amazing team of people. Um, pray that you will help them to share uh, God's, your love, Lord, effectively with patients and staff this week. May they be real good Samaritans to those uh, in their care uh, this week. And for children and families in their own homes together, 
pray that um, whatever age you are, you can think of ways just to show kindness, to reach out to people. Maybe it's to your own parents with acts of love. Amen. And indeed, for all of our clergy, thank you, Paul, for that. Yeah, we pray for our clergy. Pray, Lord, that you'll help and encourage them in, in their leadership and in their responsibilities to care uh, this week. So I think we should, we've been going for nearly an hour. I think I we should, uh, I think we should draw, draw to a close and leave you to get on with the rest of your days. I'm going, to, I'm going to, I'm going to try one of those um, bread rolls that I made yesterday, um, see what they're like, perhaps have that with my, uh, with my coffee. So um, bless you all. I'm going to um, close with a prayer for us. Um, and, uh, and, and then we'll, we'll say goodbye. Oh, yes, there are just a couple of notices. Um, so, this is church. Yes, this is church. We're, a couple of notices. So we'll be back here next week. The following week, there is a, a diocesan Thy Kingdom Come event that's happening uh, that, that uh, St. Martin's Liscard are, uh, are leading on. So I'm going to suggest we all uh, tune in to that. So um, next week, normal, as normal. Next week, normal, but well, in two weeks' new time. Normal new normal, in two weeks' time, uh, that will be the Thy Kingdom Come event. And we are thinking about um, how we can keep things going online. Of course, we've no idea how long that's going to be. Um, but uh, we, need to, we need to think and, and pray about what the, what's the right way to carry on doing all this as well. Anyway, let me, let, let, let me pray for, uh, for us all now. Lord Jesus, we thank you that when we were lost, and when still we feel lost, you come and you rescue us and you put us on our feet and you care for us, you put your arm around us and you tell us that you love us. Lord, for the, for the hope and for the confidence that gives us, uh, we, give you, we give you our thanks and we pray, Lord, that because we know that we are loved, so you will give us strength to love others. Uh, just as you do uh, in your name and for your glory. And Lord, for that purpose, we pray your blessing now. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon us and remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Well, bless you all. Have, have good weeks. Be good Samaritans. And just remember how much Jesus loves you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.